going on, y'all? It's Mar. And Cheyenne. And this is the Need to Know. Wee. Today we are talking mental health. Um, we have another guest coming. They're running a little late, so they're going to ease into the episode. But for now, um, we got a special guest in the building. Um, today we're, we're touching on a very, very sensitive topic. So to start off, how is your mental health? How do you feel your oh, mental wow. health is going? I'm just jumping right in there, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, how is my mental health? Well, I would say it's 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 on the up. Mm-hmm. What is that? What is that? On the up and up? Order? Up and up, yeah. <laughs> it's on the up and up. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have a therapist, and uh, she's black, and she's a lady. She's a woman. Nice. Um, and she even said I'm, you know, doing well from when I first started therapy or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I would say it's on the up and up. Like, um, once I took the steps to realize, um my triggers and i don't know what gets me down i do the opposite of that yeah i I would say i'm I'm pretty okay with the same um i I do want to get into therapy i don't know why i've never like tried it but i do want to like try it um i feel like we're living in a world now where like therapy is more common versus being uncommon in terms of your mental health if it's too personal then you don't have to but uh what was like kind of your wake up call to say, okay, I need to take care of my mental health. So (laughs) funny story. Um, when was this? I think this was maybe a year ago, right? Mm -hmm. My boyfriend at the time, he like cheated in a way. Some people consider it cheating. Some people don't, whatever. Um, he like cheated in a way. And like, I think because I never expected it from him, it like shook me, you know, cause that wasn't the first time I was cheated on, but I'm just like, you don't expect it from that person. So it was just like, right. you know? And so I, at the time, I think I wanted like advice or whatever. So I went to like some therapist. The dude sucked. Like he claimed that he was a therapist for, for the prisoners on Rikers Island or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he just like, he would never tell me how long my sessions were. Um, I would be talking. He'll be like, all right, you have nothing else to say. Okay, well, let's just wrap up. And like, we'll get up and start walking out the door. So that was my first experience with, with, with uh, a therapist. And so, um, yeah, I went to him during that time mm-hmm. when I was trying to figure out, like, hey, should I leave this dude? Should I stay? And then after that, I'm just like, okay, I see how this can be beneficial, mm-hmm. but I guess I just picked the wrong person. And that's another thing. Like, with therapy, it's kind of like dating. You have to figure out, like, who's for you. Right. And that's the part that I didn't feel like doing. And so after that experience, um, I waited, like, a long time. I think I steered away from the question. No, no, you on the right path. Okay. Um, I waited for a long time to um, find another therapist. Mm-hmm. And then I landed. Somebody told me about her, and now I've been with her for a few months. And it's dope. So it was basically a, a, a relationship mishap that co- that caused me to go. Okay. okay. Yeah, I could kind of say the same thing. Um, I didn't necessarily get cheated on. It was just more like a, this person had trust issues with me. Well, not with me, but just in general mm-hmm. with relationships and I tried to be the hero for some reason, like, oh, maybe I could change them or Same maybe it's complex. Yeah. Like maybe if I show them that like there are trustworthy men mm-hmm. that she'll change her mind or she'll like grow accustomed to it. But it, it just didn't work out that way. But I would say my wake up call was like, I think one argument we had, I had posted a celebrity, Megan Good, because like Megan Good was like, she was my it for me, like celebrity crush, like forever. But I had posted it, like, just to be funny, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, everybody has a celebrity crush or somebody. Not me, think, really, but, yeah. Well, yeah, but, you know, like, yeah. whether you was younger or, like, just in general, like, yeah, yeah. somebody, a celebrity that you think, like, oh, they look good. Mm-hmm. So I had posted that, and, like, she called me crying, like, blacking on me, blowing on my phone, like, and to me, that kind of, like, woke me up, which is weird, but it woke me up to make me realize like, okay, maybe I can't be that savior guy or maybe I shouldn't be that guy, mm-hmm. but more so take care of me. Cause like, I basically jumped into that relationship, not knowing myself fully. Mm-hmm. And I guess that relationship kind of showed me like, it kind of told me exactly that I don't know myself. So mm-hmm. I need to take time for me to, to understand what I like, what I don't like, um, what I can control, what I can't. Um, and yeah. So, I guess the next question would be, where do you feel the state of mental health is now and what, how can it improve pretty much? Um, right now, I feel like um, the mental health, I guess, conversation is at a good spot. Low key, though, just being real, 
I, I think it's getting annoying though. It's starting to become like commercialized, right? Which mm-hmm. does everything in our generation, like everything becomes, you know, that thing. So it is pretty healthy, I guess, because now it's out in the open. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of annoying because every two seconds it's something, and I'm not. I don't want to sound like a bad person because I believe in, you know, whatever, mental health and stuff like that. But yeah. I just feel like it's becoming so, yeah, commercialized that now I think we're starting to lose, like, the sight of it again. Before, when I was younger, it wasn't really talked about as much. Right. The only thing that I would hear is, like, people in my age talking about, oh, my gosh, I'm depressed. Like, people would just throw around, like, different terms. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh, I'm bipolar. I'm this, I'm that. And not really understanding what it was. Now, you kind of have no excuse to understand what a certain term is or not right. because it's so popular. So I, I feel like the conversation's in a good spot. It's just low key annoying. So if we could just figure out a way to not commercialize it, mm-hmm. it would be cool. Yeah. I mean, I agree too. I feel like more times than not, I'm seeing it like kind of plastered on me. Yep. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing necessarily. Cause I understand like you got to keep the, the talks going. Mm-hmm. It's just more so like people are selling products on mental health and it's just like, yeah this is not the reason why mental health became so big. It's just more so like we realize like we need to take care of ourselves mentally. Yes. It's not about buying cups and shirts and <laughs> parades. Like to me, I'm, I'm cool with a mental health parade It's just for me. Like the parade is cool. Cause I understand like we're celebrating people acknowledging their mental health. Mm-hmm. However, like that shouldn't be the main focus. Like, like mental health is a everyday topic. It's not yeah. just, or a parade and then we just forget about the next day so exactly i don't know for me like i like i like how we're keeping the conversation going because it is important however like the cups and the shirts and the <laughs> and the, the instagram hashtags and it's just it's kind of like why though like yeah it's, it's the same concept as like juneteenth for example like juneteenth was a day of celebration for all color people like we acknowledged this was a day that we was like legally free from slavery mm-hmm. but now they're making peanut butter Juneteenth flavored. It's just like, why? Like Everything is commercialized. Yeah, that's corny to me because it's just like, this was not a holiday. This was more like a, like we celebrate it, but it's not a holiday, if that makes sense. Like yeah. we're not, we're not happy that this was, a, we shouldn't have been slaves in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Right. So the right. fact that we have this day is like, we celebrate it because it's like, oh, we should have been had this day from day one. Right. And so. it's like, it starts to take away the importance of something. So, right. Mm-hmm. Juneteenth, you making peanut butter or like mayonnaise or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's starting to take. It's starting. It's starting to honestly water down the message. Right. Just like mental health, it's starting to water down. Like now, is people hearing it, they don't even take it that serious anymore because we've heard it so much in the past few years. Right. Right. Being and I don't want to like categorize mental health for different races, but I feel like every race has their own um, yeah. kind of distractions or depressions, um, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So what do you feel like color people go through mental health worse? Is it similar to other races or is it kind of better? Well, I guess I could just answer, I don't know. Being a black woman, Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't really, when I was, I went to a high school where the majority of our, well, I'm not saying our, the majority of the population was white people. And at the Mm -hmm. time we didn't really talk about mental health. So I don't really know how it is with them. Mm-hmm. But I can answer for, you know, being a black woman. It, uh, I w- I, the reason why I feel like it's worse is because it's something that in a lot of our households, you can't really open up about. Right. And, you know, there's memes going around now, like, you tell your mom you're depressed, and she's like, oh, go clean the kitchen or something. <laughs> and that's like, that's yeah. true in a lot of house black households. It's like, you can't really talk about it mm-hmm. because they make it, they made you feel as though you're being dramatic or it's not real go do something or you on your phone too much, something like stupid. And it's just like, that's why I feel like it's a little bit more difficult for African-Americans because we don't have those like outlets versus I think the Caucasian and the clear folks, they have the, I guess they have those outlets or people will listen to them before they listen to us. Mm -hmm. They, if a black woman is complaining or a black woman is mad, they're quick to call her the angry black woman or something. It's just like after a while, for some of us, that shuts us down. Right. You calling somebody an angry black woman? No, I'm not. I'm not an angry black woman. I'm just upset at something that I don't know triggered me. Right. So, but yeah, I I agree. I feel like even though I will admit there are some times where black women, I've always <laughs> acknowledged that black women's anger is very different other races' anger. It's like 
other races, I'm pretty sure a white woman, like, if she's mad, like, she gonna, like, go to therapy or she gonna, like, <laughs> do yoga or something. Black women, when they angry, like, they gonna break your car, they gonna tear well, the house down. Be, like, it might be because, like, well, I'm not, the, I'm not the one to break your car or nothing like that. Yeah. But it might be because, you know, We've held it in for so long, or I, yeah, I, I could. And also, that. we don't really, we didn't have um, what is that word? Emotional intelligence. Like we didn't really learn that. Mm -hmm. We didn't learn emotional intelligence. So, yeah. I guess it seems like the black woman. We just go crazy because mm -hmm. that's what we one. That's what we saw, right. and then that's what's low key um promoted too about black women. Like that's how you act when you get mad. So you see that and you do that. Now mm -hmm. I don't do that, but I'm just saying I'm just speaking for us together. Right, right. Yeah. I get that too. Cause I'm not gonna lie, a lot of if you think about the like most popular black movies, it's usually a black be. woman violating because the guy did something crazy. But I, I will admit, like, and I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not putting blame on anyone. But I, I do feel like our parents, our parents do play a part in how we are today. Even though I will admit, like, and I do love this about our generation, the fact that we're we're learning to have our own minds. Where it's mm -hmm. like we're not taking what our parents taught us into today but more so like we're creating change i agree but i will admit as a kid like i used to get beat because i ain't take the garbage out too fast like that that yeah. to me is like crazy like and i i'm not against beatings necessarily but i'm not for it either because i feel like parents take that too far like there's certain things that you should not beat your job for yeah. like him not doing the dishes is well like come on yeah, and it's also when you you choose to beat your child. Because yeah. if you're already mad and then you go to beat your kid, now you're beating them out of anger. Right. The discipline part is lost in translation because yeah. you just sit here, uh -huh. sat here and whooped somebody because you was mad. Right. And I, I do admit that, like, in terms of the black culture, like, we, we've learned to use our anger as a form of, mm -hmm. like, getting shit done. Mm -hmm. So, like, for example, and back to parents, like, Parents, instead of, like, disciplining your child, and I'm not saying beating is not disciplining, but, like, teaching your child, okay, don't do this and do a different route, they'll beat their child so that their child knows, okay, if I do this, I'm going to get beat. So let me not mm -hmm. do that so oh. I can avoid that beating, right. if that makes sense. Which, I'm not going to lie, it works, but to a certain degree, it, it also creates mental problems in terms of, like, going further or, like, you can't deal with, you can't deal with certain... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? You can't deal with certain problems without reminiscing on, like, you getting True. beat for it. So, like, now you use that beating as a form of, like, getting that problem done. If that yep. makes sense. All right. So, we're going to transition because our guest arrived. We got a third. We got a second guest in the building. All right. So, we got we got another guest in the building. You can introduce yourself. My name is Kayla. I'm 21 years old. Yeah. All right. All right. So, pretty much, we, we went into the conversation of, like, um, being black and going through like um childhood so as because i'm not gonna say every black person got beat but like in your childhood what, what was the discipline um territories like oh i got spankings most definitely i got spankings but most of the time it was spankings but or punishments like little mm -hmm. timeouts oh like timeouts in the corner or? like timeouts like going in your room like my cousin okay, he bro. would put me in a room like mm -hmm. but my mother she beat me yeah do you feel like your discipline from your parents um helped you with mental health did it like affect you negatively in terms of like dealing with problems or i feel like that doesn't play a part on me specifically like my mm -hmm. beating like my punishments or whatever the case may be my disciplines mm -hmm. i feel like other stuff did rather than that okay. i feel like it depends on how you take it like mm -hmm. how you take it i asked earlier um well we kind of touched on relationships as well so do you feel like um or actually no we didn't touch on we did touch on relationships but the question was about um, like, what was your moment that you um, realized that you needed to take care of, like, yourself mentally? Once I got into high school, I started to realize, like, mm -hmm. things is different. Like, you're originally seeing, like, a little bit of the real world, but mm -hmm. still dealing with stuff from your past, like, your childhood. Right. So that's when. Okay. So, all right, I'm, I'm going to dive into that because I feel like high school, let me tell you all something. High school is the most brutal and parents don't realize it because i feel like I, I mean even though our parents went through high school i feel like they don't realize what high school is today as opposed to what it was like high school is so bitter and it's like <laughs> it's just it's popularity based it's like a reality tv show like literally every day like and me and me and kayla went to the same high school like law enforcement bro in queens jamaica queens oh. i swear to god i would never go there again like, <laughs> 
Oh my god! Like, what is my kids doing? None of that. It's yeah, ridiculous. like, but just high school in general. Like, I feel like high school was kind of the the biggest. I don't want to say like eye opener, but like it was more so. You realize high school in the real world is like two separate things. Like once you graduate, you realize everything that you was supposed to be going through, but like high school kind of like clouded that. So for both of your experiences, like what do you feel like high school did for you mentally? I feel like it messed me up mentally. Honestly, like when I started, like my freshman year, my dad died and my older sister went away to college. So I had nobody there to like teach me stuff. So I had to learn through things by myself on my own mm-hmm. and just like figure things out by myself. When my sister went to college, I was the only child. So I was by myself. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that messed me up. Uh, for me, high school, it was like, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say, not a wake-up call, but like an eye-opener, but I think it's because I was with other cultures. Mm-hmm. Sorry. You can hear. I was with other cultures, so I don't know. Some stuff that these clear people was doing, I'm just like, what? First of all, and I'm not even trying to be, I'm not a racist, but, okay, <laughs> I don't know I'm going, like, left field, but I'm going to bring it back. So, like, I was in the school, whatever, and I was one out of, like, maybe, like, five black kids. Mm. And one thing that bothered me was, like, the hygiene of these clear people. Like, when they were, like, wet, bro, they smell funny. I'm just like, what is <laughs> happening? Like, it was just weird. And so it was, like, a, a an eye-opener. I was, I don't know, I think... Part of me was just like, it helps me now, I guess, now that I'm like older and I can say I experienced certain things or I ate certain foods or I tried certain things because I was like mm-hmm. in a multicultural, well, not multicultural, but, you know, an, another culture's uh, school. And then on the other end, I also realized how much like clear people, some of them are raised to almost feel sorry for us. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm not even gonna lie, I got through one of my, um, one of my classes, gym, don't laugh. I failed gym, right? I did too. One, oh, okay. One marking period, though. <laughs> I don't remember how many. I failed in mad times. <laughs> and so I needed it to graduate. And so at the time, so at my high school, I started a step team. How did I start a step team with white people? I don't know, but it worked. <laughs> um, I started a step team. And I felt like, so they allowed me to use my credits from the step team practices to, my, to use it for gym. Mm-hmm. And so my principal was... A clear person and I felt like she like felt bad and that's why she allowed it to happen so looking back mm-hmm. I'm just like I see how like some white people that are like racist or they feel bad for they us they pity like, you yes yeah. they pity they pitied me bro and the thing is it worked for me then but now looking back I'm just like nah like they was just acting weird because yeah. they felt bad or yeah. whatever yeah but yeah high school it was definitely different um it was a whole bunch of drama like my freshman class, like, they freaking drink. They drink in school. And mm-hmm. this girl had, like, a seizure in the bathroom. It was, like, crazy stuff. It was just, like, crazy stuff. I was just like, yeah. Come to think of it, like, a lot of the traumatic events I went through happened in high school. Like, I would say college opened my eyes more to, because I was more free. Like, well, once I graduated high school, I was more free, like, to seeing the world. But high school kind of, like, especially the high school I came from, like, it already roughened me up. So when I got into the outside world, I was like, okay, I, I've seen this. Like, I know Shadeja old it. Like, she, she went through that. <laughs> so like, familiar. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not calling Shadeja out because unless I... No, nah, I don't even know Shadeja. So Shadeja. We're just going to say Shadeja. But it, it like high school was just more so... I knew what high school was going into it because of the stigma of high school. But I don't know why I feel like high school was... was that one memory that no matter what, it's always going to stay with me. Like, yeah. I've seen too much bullshit happen, and it wasn't even, like, it didn't even start. It just started out of nowhere. Like, niggas was just, you know what I mean? Like, Literally. you be in class just writing, and somebody be like, yo, like, why are you looking at me like that? Yeah, and then stupid. it just starts up, and then you got yeah. drama. You got girls from other classes across the hall talking about, oh, I heard you was talking on Instagram. Like, high school was just a mental drain that I feel like, once I got out of high school, I learned about therapy. I learned about mm. yoga, meditation, um, which I do feel like a lot of high schoolers need. Yeah. Because people don't realize what they go through a lot mentally as well. Um, yeah. But everybody kind of like pushes them out, or I guess the older generation like pushes them out because, oh, you're young, you'll get through it. 
but I think that's the wrong message or that's the message I've, I've received when I was younger that, um, even though mental health is a great thing now, back then it was kind of like, we were seen as too young to be going through what we're going through. Yeah. So with that being said, what do you feel like the younger generation should do in terms of their mental health? Like what are their outlets in terms of speaking up about what they're going through? I feel like in today's society, there's no real like thing to help them. Like, if we talk about it, it seems as if like they're crazy or there's nothing really wrong with them or mm-hmm. they're just in a bad mood or something. It's not something that is taken seriously. Right. So like they have to find something that could help them like personally because not everything's going to help everybody. Some things mm-hmm. is just going to help you and not work for others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like, well, I know that um, in schools they have guidance counselors and stuff like that. I know a lot of young people don't really use, I didn't utilize mine. So yeah. I know they don't. Utilize theirs. Um, I have heard that some schools now have like meditation rooms, but it's not really public schools. It's like those charter schools and stuff. Mm-hmm. That meditation rooms. Um, young people, you guys could download apps. Like they have apps called like I think Better or Balance or something like that. Yeah. Where it tells you when to like take time to yourself. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Until you can, I guess, until your parents uh, want you to be in therapy. Use what you use your phone. I mean, we use our phone for everything else. So look up apps. So mm-hmm. where you can um, take that time to yourself. Write in your notes. Yeah, talk to write yourself. stuff in your notes. I told somebody the other day, like, make a voice recording like of how you feel. Like, if you can't really talk about it at the moment, record yourself mm-hmm. and get it out. Get it off your chest. All right, so the last thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on is, um, I guess, the, the word therapy. And I feel like, especially in our culture, um, therapy to black people is kind of seen like, I'm not, I'm not talking to some stranger about my problems. Like, I'm just going to handle it. Yeah. Um, so how do you feel or what was your vision or thought process about therapy? And then if you did go to therapy, like how did it change? I actually had to go to therapy for a while, but I never talked to the lady. Like I never really sat there and talked to her. I would avoid things to actually getting stuff off my chest, but I wish I did because sometimes you need somebody to talk to somebody who's not yourself or somebody who's not your friend, somebody who don't know you. So they can't judge you for it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's some it's good it's a good thing to do but i don't know some people have like a misconception on it as if like it's a bad thing it's really not it's really not mm-hmm. but it's it could be useful depending yeah. on how you use it well how i envisioned therapy was i thought i, I thought it literally was like a couch like i thought all therapists like supposed to have couches in the offices and like you lay on the couch and you need to talk and that's what i was excited to do i'm just like okay like i can lay down with my head with my hands down <laughs> my head, like just talking and when i started the first two, when I walked in the office, it looked like it was an interview. So I said to him, like, this looks like an interview. Like, we got to change this up. And then now I do virtual therapy. So I can lay on my couch if I want to. Um, once I got over the fact of, like, you know, it's, it's, every therapist or every therapist's office is not going to look the way you thought it would look or how it looks on TV. Mm-hmm. I was just like, okay, this is cool. Because, you know, a lot of, you know, us color folks, we grow up in the house where it's like, what's, what's said in this house or whatever happens in this house stays in this house type thing. Mm-hmm. So we all have like this rule of like secrecy, like this thing where you're not supposed to talk about things. Mm-hmm. Um, and even if sometimes, and if, even if some of us do talk about something, we leave certain details out so that, you know, people don't say nothing about us. Even if it's spread, even if it gets like spread or whatever, mm-hmm. it's not like, oh, D, you know, stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I had to get used to talking to a therapist like openly, like she can't tell my business. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think once I got past, you know, the TV view or mm-hmm. whatever, I was just like, okay, this works. She wants to have my business. Um, she's going to give me an unbiased, like, opinion or help because mm-hmm. she don't know me. And then also I was happy to stop, like, self-diagnosing myself because I feel mm-hmm. like a lot of us will, like, look up stuff on Google <laughs> or whatever, trying yeah. to figure out, like, what's wrong with us. And Google's telling you something crazy. And it's just like, when you talk to somebody about it, a professional, they're like, no, this is these are your symptoms. This is what it is. Mm-hmm. And once you figure out what it is, you can now deal with those problems as it is. Like, right. I just feel good. I don't have to keep looking on Google for stuff. Like, now I could just go to her and be like, hey, this is that. This is whatever. What happened? What is this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm definitely an advocate for it. I never was really before. Mm-hmm. But now Most I am. definitely, yeah. Yeah. Especially growing up again, like, my parent, well, my mother was always like she was so conscious about her like yes image yes so if i do something is oh you making me her. look yeah. bad like yeah. but it's like i'm not i'm not doing it because of you like i'm not even thinking about you in this situation it's just more me yeah. but as i got older i understood where she's coming from even though it's still wrong mm-hmm. but 
um, I, I do think like, of course the environment plays like a major part, but, um, I will say for, you know, for everybody, not just colored people, like therapy is a great outlet. Um, it's a non judgment free zone where you could just say whatever's on your mind, what you're going through. And like, you don't have to fear of that person judging you. Um, but I will say too, like, don't just stick with one therapist just because you found a therapist. Some people might not work for you, even though they might be a good person. Yeah. Um, you just have to find what works for you, which is what she touched on earlier. It's, it's kind of like dating. Like you, you got to weigh out your options, like who works best for me. So, yeah. but to wrap up, uh, I guess my last quick question would be where can they find you guys? Um, and also like one quick advice for somebody that's going through mental health issues. Um, you guys can find me on Instagram at Cheyenne Wisdom. Um, and my advice would be to never let anybody like shut you up. Like your story is your story. It don't matter who, what, where, when, why. Don't let nobody shut your story up. Like it's your story. You can tell it how you want to tell it. Not being messy, but you know, tell your story. That's it. Um, you can find me on Instagram at K Vortex. And to piggyback off of what you said, always don't be scared to talk about your problems. Like mm -hmm. it makes you who you are today and it's always that's always gonna be your story, your background story. Mm -hmm. Growing up, that's just who you are. It makes you who you are. Mm -hmm. Don't be scared to do to do that. That was dope. Uh all right, real quick before I wrap up, shout out to my man, He Man. Um, he was supposed to be on the episode, but unfortunately couldn't make it. Um, shout out to his project that's going on. He is dope. Y'all should check him out. He Man Armstrong on Instagram. That's his. That it's no, it changed. It changed. It changed. Yeah. yeah. Right All right. So his Instagram is H E M V N N. If I spelled it right, thank God. <laughs> if not, I'm gonna write it down. Um, but y'all can follow me on on Instagram and Twitter underscore We Want More, and y'all can follow the show page at T N T K Show. Um, shout out to our lovely guests for coming through, giving us a lovely episode. Um, and yeah. Oh, I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to say thanks for watching the show. And then you guys will say that's all you need to know. Okay. All right. And as always, thank you guys for watching the show. And that's all you need to know. Bye, y'all. I'm sorry. Yo, first time? Huh?